Good morning, LED boys and girls. Welcome to Sunday worship service. Let's rise to praise and worship our Lord with all of our hearts. To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in praise And I want to be thankful I want to be grateful I want to remember everything That the Lord has To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in prayer
God gave the first two people a beautiful garden to call home. He gave them everything they needed, and he gave them a command. God said, you may eat from any of the trees in the garden, except for one. The garden had a tree in it called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God warned the man, if you eat from that tree, you will die. Now, the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals. One day, the serpent went to the woman. Did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? He asked. The woman answered, we can eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, but God told us not to eat from the tree in the middle of the garden. He said if we eat the fruit or touch it, we will die. No, you will not die, the serpent lied. You will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman looked at the fruit. It did look delicious, and she wanted to be wise. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew that they were naked. So they sewed together fig leaves and made clothes for themselves. That evening, the man and his wife heard God walking in the garden. They hid among the trees. God called out to the man, where are you? The man said, I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Who told you that you were naked? God asked. Did you eat from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man blamed his wife. She gave me some of the fruit from the tree and, and I ate it, he said. The woman blamed the serpent. He tricked me, she said. God said bad things would happen. Life would be hard and painful, all because of sin. But God promised that one of the woman's descendants would destroy the serpent. God made those first people, Adam and Eve, clothes out of animal skins and sent them out of the garden. God put angels and a sword of fire at the entrance of the garden to guard the way to the tree of life. Ever since Adam and Eve sinned, all people have been sinners. Our sin separates us from God, but God still loves us. God promised a rescuer would come from Eve's family. God sent his son, Jesus, to rescue people from sin and bring them back to God. Throughout the last three weeks, we learn about God's creation through Genesis chapter 1 and 2. We learn that God created everything out of nothing. Out of all of God's perfect creation, people were the most special because we were created in God's image. All that God created was created to reveal God's glory. Before we start today's sermon, I would like to ask one question. I believe you might be able to answer this question because we learned this for three weeks. We learn about God's creation, right? So here's a question to you. Why did God create everything? That's right, God created everything for His glory and for our good. Today, we are going to learn about when and how sin entered the world. In God's original creation, everything was perfect, but it didn't stay that way. Let's read together today's key verse Genesis 3, 6. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Genesis 3, 6. As you just watched today's Bible story video, God gave first two people everything they needed, 
and he gave them a command. God said, You may eat from any of the trees in the garden except for one. God warned the man, If you eat from the tree, you will die. What happened? Did they obey God or disobey God? Did he do? God said, You may eat from any of the tree in the garden except for one. God warned the man, If you eat from that tree, you will die. What happened, everyone? Did they obey God or disobey God? Let's read today's verse once again. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Genesis 3, 6 Adam and Eve rebelled against God by disobeying God. Let's take a look at 1 John 3, 4. It says that everyone who sins break the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. Joshua chapter 118 also says about sin, Whoever rebels against your word and does not obey your words, whatever you may command them will be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Like we just read, sin is described in the Bible as a transgression, the law of God, and rebellion against God. So, let's recap. What is sin? Sin is breaking the law of God and rebellion against God by disobeying God. Satan is always the one behind the temptation. Because he is against God and anything that brings him glory. You will not surely die, the serpent said to woman. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eye will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Genesis 3, 4, 5 The serpent tempted Eve to doubt God's goodness. And what happened? Adam and Eve were tempted to disobey God. When Satan tempts us to sin, he may try to get us to doubt God's goodness too. We must be aware of Satan and his tactic in order to resist them. Let's see James chapter 4, 7. It says that, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And also, let's see Matthew twenty six forty one. Jesus says that, Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but flesh is weak. So what is temptation? Temptation is that influences you to disobey God. Once again, what is temptation? Temptation is that influences you to disobey God. What is God's grace? Sin has consequences. When God gave his commands to the first man, he mentioned the consequences too. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. The biggest consequence of sin is that it separates us from God, and we deserve to die. However, Ephesians 2 8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this not from yourself, it is the gift of God. The only way that any of us can enter into a relationship with God is because of His grace toward us. Romans 6.23 says that, For the wage of sin is that, but the gift of God is eternal 
life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Adam and Eve rebelled against God. From that time on, creation was ruined and everyone has been born a sinner. But God would not leave people to remain dead in sin. Romans 5.8 Let's read it together. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So what is God's grace? Grace refers to God's favor upon those who have transgressed His law and sinned against Him. All of the stories in the Bible face together to create the larger story of how God rescues sinners, us, through His Son, Jesus. Let's read Christ's connection for today's Bible story and I will finish his sermon for today. Ever since Adam and Eve sinned, all people have been sinners. Our sin separates us from God, but God still loves us. God promised a rescuer would come from Eve's family. God sent his son, Jesus, to rescue people from sin and bring them back to God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for letting us the truth about who we are as sinners. We see your love in how you provide a way for people to be saved from death. We need Jesus. Thank you for sending Jesus Christ while we were still sinners. Help us turn to you in our need and receive your grace. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm-hmm.